Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, welcome again to Serene Spotlight. Um, today the spotlight falls on uh, none other than My Stories Occupational Therapist. And here we have Miss Alia. So, Hello. Yay. So Alia, uh, yes. please share a bit uh, about yourself. Alright, so basically my name is Noor Alia Shwada Binti Karun Anwar. Usually in my story, they call me as Teacher Alia. And I'm an occupational therapist in my story. And then um, what I do is uh, do the occupational therapy uh, for the kids, especially for the special needs children. Okay. Um, um, what is your, tell, tell us uh, or share with us a, a bit about uh, on your credentials, your academic credentials. So basically, uh, I'm is a graduate. Uh, I'm graduated from UITM Puncha Alam for diploma in occupational therapy and also for bachelor in occupational therapy until 2020, 2020. And then after that, uh, I work in um region region hospital before I come to my story. So how many years of working experience do you have? Mm, it's more than uh, more than five years, but I don't remember how much. <laughs> right. And for in Malaysia to be an occupational therapist, um, what is the uh, how do you say the licensing? Is there like licensing? Um, yeah, now we have act, which is we need to register under Ministry of Health uh, to be an occupational therapist. Otherwise, we have a lot of fake therapies out there. That's the reason why now the law have developed the uh, new act for health sciences. So all the occupational therapies need to register under Ministry of uh, Health Science, uh, Ministry of Health uh, for profession open, and Majlis Profession Negara. Ah, oh, okay. So it means for parents? Listeners, yeah, if your parents, parents and teachers they want to know yeah. if they take therapies or not, then they can check from there. Wonderful. So for parents, please do check. There are um other people who are not licensed, and okay. for occupational therapy later, you're going to find out more about it. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, we believe that it's better if you check out their background and also um engage an occupational therapist that is uh fully qualified. Mm -hmm. So with that, we'll go into today's topic, basically all about occupational therapy, what they are, because there are many people out there, they think they know, you know, or sometimes, oh, occupational therapy, and then, and then they always talk about physical and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so today, we are actually going to delve more into it and to find out more what exactly occupational therapy is. So the floor is yours, Miss Alia. Alright, so basically, the occupational therapy is a therapy that uh, use a client centered help for uh, use a client centered and promoting the health and well being through the occupation. What we do is, uh, for our daily life, we have a lot of things that we do, like example, we wake up from sleep, then we eating, uh, showering, a lot of the things that we do known as occupation. occupation. So that's what we do to help the kids and also the person that are affected to perform the activity so we will do the uh the goal which is that we centered the goal for the for the person so we help them to uh participate in the activities of everyday life so basically the key is everyday life because yes, like for example um this is not just even though uh, Alia is uh, focus. Alia's focus is for pediatrician or pe pediatrics, so means for children. But occupational therapy is basically for anyone who has difficulty yes. um, handling daily life. For example, like stroke patient. You know, sometimes when, when they get stroke, oh, right. uh, part part of their body are not able to function. So that's where occupational therapists come into the picture. Yes, and also sometimes we don't know that. We, we just know that uh, the people only see uh, occupational therapy comes for a uh, person that injured, like, for like example, stroke patient or uh, children that have uh, disabilities or the person that have physical difficulties. We also, uh, 
actually we also uh, attending for person like we have uh, depression like the psychiatric patient we also see them because we want to help them to uh, participate in the activity of everyday life right so means it, it, this is not just physical health but also mental health um it covers correct okay interesting it cover everything wow okay interesting so yes and uh, tell us a bit more uh, uh what do you do um you know yeah some example of what what do you do usually what we do is we need to assess uh how they perform the activity daily living which is the adl and then we also have IADL, which is instrument uh, of activity daily living, which is how he he or she able to perform the activity for another person, not for him or of, not for their self only, but to another person also. And then for the education, working part, and social and leisure, how they we we be able to perform the activities because in our daily life, uh, we not only uh. We not only uh, stay at home or just do nothing at home. Actually, we do a lot of things. That the things that we do is one occupation for us. Okay, and how is um, occupational therapy different from mm -hmm. uh, physiotherapy? Oh, basically, uh, they have a big difference. But for the physiotherapy, what we can see usually. They treat a lot of uh, physical part, like how how the ability of a uh, gait pattern, how the uh, the to perform strengthening or endurance for the the person, and also we do uh, have a lot of uh gross motor skill and musculoskeletal concept for them. But in OT, we more focus on the fine motor skill, visual perception, the cognitive part. And then the emotional regulation and something that require them to uh, be able performing the ADL tasks like example feeding, how they're able to perform showering and the other things like in the ADL part. So can on the layman, yeah, you know, I'm layman when it comes to yeah, occupational the therapy. Part. So for, for the layman point of view, can I can I summarize to say from my understanding is mm -hmm. occupational ter therapists basically like it, you know, like you mentioned, deal with day to day uh things, you know. Okay. So it can focus also not just uh how our body function but also mm -hmm. the environment, right? Mm -hmm. Whether the whether be it furniture or the okay. things that we use, you yeah. know, so so you you or occupational you therapies, the, uh, adaptation yeah. and the right. Where else, uh, physiotherapists they focus more on the body, how the correct. body works, the muscles, yes. the joints. Yes. Correct. Yes, correct. Like the strengthening the muscle. Okay. Uh, so that's the the differentiate between occupational therapies and also the physiotherapies. Okay, so normally, let's say for a, for a parent, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, with a child. So how would they know who to engage? Um, this one they need to get a referral, which is the diagnosis first. Then if they know the diagnosis, like example, we have ASD children, or we have um, okay, the the like example, the simple one, we have cerebral palsy, which is the affected the functional part and also the body uh body parts. This kind of person they need to seek uh occupational therapy as well as the facial therapies. For the patient therapist, they will attend for the strengthening, endurance, how the body movement uh, can help them to perform the ADL part. And the OT part, they will do more on the how they be able be, uh, to be functioning to perform the task, to perform the ADL task. All right. Yeah. Um, good. Thank you. Thank you for the explanation. Um, could you share with us some cases, some success mm -hmm. cases? Success cases that I have uh, actually a lot lah, but can can yeah. share one uh, kids that I have before this about uh, he have a uh, high is it, oh no he, he has ADHD previously he kicked out from the school 
Mm. Because of the hyper and like to go round of the school and have difficulty for following instruction and as well as the attention part. And then when he attending the therapy, um, and then he attending the classroom readiness therapy in a mind story, and then a lot of things that he do, now he able to join with this uh, normal school again. And then he much more, be much better from the first day I see him. Can you share a bit what are the things that you actually work with him on? Uh, usually what we uh, what OT will do, we will tackle the sensory part, which is, which is we have a pyramid of learning. In the pyramid of learning, we need to tackle the below part, which is, which is the foundation fundamental part which is a sensory if we not tackle the sensory the, the rest of the part will be affected like example the attention in the cognitive academic skills um, and then daily living skills will be affected if the sensory not settled and then when the sensory settled we focus on the gross motor as well as the fine motor skill because this motor skill will help uh, the kids to be ever more and to be able to perform more cognitive part. For us in occupational therapies, usually we see that cognitive is the highest level in the pyramid, which is uh, the academic learning, uh, ADL skill, behavior, all of that is in the cognitive uh, cognitive performance. If the one of the part like sensory or gross motor or fine motor skill is affected, then we affect the other area in the cognitive. Right. So besides working with kids, um, uh -huh. do you also work with parents? Yeah, we, we will use, uh, we will work with the parents because in occupational therapy, we only see the kids for one hour. Uh, the longest one is one and a half hours. The rest of the time, the kids will have time with the parents. So what parents can do is bring them uh, or expose them to uh, a lot of multi-sensory place, like example, uh, playground or uh, beach. They have a lot of uh, multi-sensory that they can get. And then help also help them to strengthening the endurance, like example, bring them to uh, gym body or gym or rock climbing, something like that. So it's also help them for get the sensory as well as the gross motor part. So how how then you as an occupational therapist, um, you know, as I mentioned, besides you helping the children directly, how do you also, um, how do you basically work with parents? Usually uh, what we do is we give a homework for the parents to do at home. So from that, uh, from that we can track, is it the parents can do the task or cannot do? If the parents do the task at home, we can see the improvement for the kids. Macam lebih kurang three months or six months, we can see a different different kids that are from the first day we see him. Uh, if the the parents uh, have difficulty to perform the homework with the kids, uh, even though the, uh, the task only take five minutes every day, but if the parents cannot do, so maybe it's uh, late a bit for the punya development and okay, performance that akan lambat sikit lah. So, and that's how actually um, you as an occupational therapist would support parents by giving yeah. them like a, uh, the homework is a bit like a menu yes. lah. Uh, homework lah. <laughs> uh, a OT diet lah. Yeah, like that lah. So uh, it's easy for them to do the activity at home. It actually... To do a lot of activity at home is a simple task. Like example, I just ask them to do sweeping or wiping the table. Or the simple one is helping to do laundry care, like hanging the shirt. That's also help them to manipulate a lot of uh, finger movement as well as the ghost motor skills. Correct. So because after all, it's occupational therapy. Oh, so yeah. basically <laughs> doing chores, yeah. you know, by even, you know, things. yeah, simple as doing chores, you know, yeah. taking buses, uh, travel okay. station, all those are under the purview under the of occupation, okay. what we do. Yeah. Right. Okay. Usually what we can see is uh, most of the parents think the kids cannot do. Mm. But actually what we can do is don't underestimate our kids first. 
Sometimes they can learn through uh, visual, they also can learn through hearing. So that's how we can help them to do to perform the activity. Right. Okay. For for as an occupational therapist, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. uh, advice or what uh, you know uh, suggestion that you have for parents? Um, it's like what to look out for when 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 should they actually be seeking uh, the help of an occupational therapist or even thought about mm, maybe I should consider uh, sending my child. Yeah, uh, for me. Uh, the golden age is between three to five years old. During this age, we can uh, sharpen their skill, help them to be able performing a lot of house chores or activities or ADL activity that require them to be independent. Because the longer we wait, like example, we wait until the kids already uh, seven or eight years old. Sometimes it's quite difficult because they have their behavior, their own behavior. So not all the kids are able to tolerate with the task. Sometimes they need to be a lot, need to have a lot of, uh, pujuk something like that. Uh, so after that they can do. So for me, if uh get the have the diagnosis or even though don't have the diagnosis, uh, but if you see something different and maybe cannot do like example for five years old or six years old able to do I think, but. Your kids have difficulty to do I think so maybe you need to uh, to practice more or to uh, think about should I send to the option therapist or how so just now you mentioned um, um, three years old two years old I mean the younger yes. ones yes so again because some sometimes parents are they themselves are young parents or Correct. the first child so mm -hmm. they wouldn't know like okay i'm not sure whether you know two years old or three years old it should i mean there should be what is it should be yeah. so so what is it you know what what is it that the the the, the parents the need to, yeah need to look up yeah correct the indicator for the parents uh this one what we need to do is first we just try to expose them uh for the uh, play school or expose them with a various of uh, multi-sensory activities with them. And then if we see something like different, like example, maybe have a uh, poor eye contact or uh, poor, leg, uh, poor fine motor skills, like example, unable to perform um, certain kind of activity, but I don't remember what is the activity for the development. Usually, we use the Denver to check the development of the kids so we know which area they need to be. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for the benefit of the uh, parents out there or even teachers and stuff. So, um, I think for a lot of us as therapists, what we would suggest is, of course, to do an early screening. Early screening, uh, correct. Yeah. And you can yeah. use, of course, a lot of this screening, you can uh, get it from the internet. You know, can just download. Basically, it's what we call yeah, developmental we milestone. The milestone of the kid. Yeah, yeah. Correct. Correct. So, I think that's that's actually from, from you know, because both of us, we are both uh, different therapists. But at the end of the day, I think all therapists basically, basically uh, advise that. Yeah. So, uh, thank you so much for your time. Right. I think, uh, personally for me, I, I learned a bit more about what occupational therapy is. Yeah. And of course, for audience, if you have more questions that uh, that uh, we haven't covered uh, in mm -hmm. this uh, or video. Or you want to do more Correct. the therapies or yeah. what, they, what they do actually, yeah. Yeah, uh, obviously, if what they do is, uh, you know, if you're like really, really want to know more, I guess you have to sign up for the course. Um, yeah, but I think most, I think this is kind of uh, covered uh, uh, again, you know, just now also we talk about the differences between an occupational therapist as well as a, uh, a physiotherapist. Um, and the other thing uh, I believe is to, um, if you have a question, yeah, it's, please do write to us right, in our Facebook. Do write to us and we will do our best uh, to reply to you or you know, call us up, make an appointment to see us. Yes, because I think at the end of the day is to really observe your children's growth uh, oh. and behavior 
and of course also like what uh, Miss Alia mentioned, the handling of day to day, yeah, the day to day is as simple as going to the toilet, you know, wearing their own clothes, Nothing. yeah, even yeah. like eating. Just now she mentioned, yeah, eating because uh nowadays there are quite a number of kids who are having uh, eating issues, you know, um yeah, simple stuff like that, yes. So yeah, so again, you know, if you you have uh, more question. Please do drop us a line. Um, and uh, is there any final uh, advice from you, uh, Miss Alia, before we say goodbye to the audience? Um, for me, um, I think uh, if it is bet better to um, check the monster of the kids before you jump out like, oh, this kid can do everything without knowing what they can do. Mm. Let them explore first and then let them know what they can do, what they cannot do. Then after that, you can assess more, especially, especially for the early kids. Yeah. Mm. So basically, it's to screen. Screen, yes. first. screen our children. <laughs> and screen them first. Yeah, and observe our children. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Ms. Alia, for yeah. your time and for the audience. I hope uh, you have, you know, find out a bit more about what occupational therapy is. And as we mentioned again, please do write to us if you have any queries. With that, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we'll see thank you, you again. You're welcome. And we'll see you again another time. Bye. Bye. Bye.